If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Also, after watching this video, you may want to refer to some of the playlists that we have created for people who are interested in in-depth knowledge. These are the videos in the right sequence, which will give you thorough knowledge of the subject. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So we are discussing hyperparameter tuning and so far we have talked about grid search and randomized search. Just to do a quick recap, grid search requires us to pass a grid of hyperparameter values which would be passed like this in the form of a dictionary and we can give multiple values for each hyperparameter. The grid would continue to explore every possible combination. In our case we computed this Small grid itself led to about 162 possible combinations. And imagine each combination going through about five to 10 fold cross validation. That's going to be pretty exhaustive and time consuming. Then we discussed the possibility of doing a randomized search, wherein if we take the grid like this, we would be exploring certain random combinations of these hyperparameters. Or we could also choose a distribution in case of randomized search. Using, let's say, a library like NumPy, we could give a range of values. So when we say np.a range 3 to 8, it'll take values from 3 to 7. And the difference is that in case of grid search, we could specifically try only the values 3, 5, and 7. But now if we take it like a distribution, we could be trying all the values from 3 to 7 with a step size of 1. So is the case with min sample leap. Here we took just three values, but when we give it a range, let's say from 10 to 101, it'll try all possible random values in between from 10 to 100. Again, the upper value is not counted. So it could come with different combinations and how many combinations it will explore depends on the number of iterations that we are choosing to run it for. So if we choose just 10 iterations, it will try only 10 possible combinations. Still, you can imagine this will be faster compared to grid search but it is quite possible that you may not get the best results because you just randomly sampled a few combinations. You've not explored the entire set of possibilities. Another major opportunity that exists with both these approaches is that these searches that we are performing are not linked to each other. So let's come back to grid search and try to select a combination of hyperparameters, one of the combinations out of those 162 possibilities. Let's say this is our selection. So we've selected the max depth as 3, min sample leaf is 50, min sample split as 30, and estimators as 10, and the max features as log 2. This would be one run, and then we'll of course be generating some kind of a cross-validation score, depending on the scoring metric. Let's say after this, we do another run, and we do with different set of hyperparameter values here. Can you imagine if there would be a connection between the first run and the second run that we're talking about on the right? Well, actually, there is no connection. So the point is, all these hyperparameter combinations that we are experimenting with, say 162 combinations in our case, are all independent of each other. We are not learning in the sequence. But don't you think if you start doing something and you carry forward some amount of learning of what you've already accomplished that helps you make better decisions in future? That's totally missing in case of grid search and randomized search. So we can't say if we are actually improving it's just an independent trial of different hyperparameter combinations. No guarantee that you'll get better results as you continue to learn further. Now, the answer to this problem comes in the form of Bayesian search or Bayes search as we call it. So to quickly refresh, you all must be remembering the formula for Bayes theorem in probabilities. It's something like this. What's the relevance of this formula here? Let's have a look at it. Aren't we trying to solve this problem that given a good recall score, what is the hyperparameter combination? In other words, given that we get an optimal recall score, what is the best hyperparameter combination? That is what we try to find out through a grid search. This is called the posterior probability, and this would be dependent on the probability of the optimal score given the hyperparameter combination. Now, this might sound a little confusing, but let me just try to simplify. So from our entire hyperparameter space, we will randomly sample some hyperparameter combinations and we would want to see the scores given the choice was these hyperparameters. And then we would want to gradually improve in such a way that we come up with the optimal hyperparameter combination. So this is achieved using two steps. First is the step which requires us to create a surrogate model. Now, what is a surrogate model? It's basically a probabilistic model to the initial data. What is initial data? We are talking about a random combination of hyperparameters. This model approximates the objective function 
What is the objective function? That's the recall in our case and could be any other metric for that matter. The objective is the goal of the algorithm and provides us the estimate of the function value and uncertainty for any given set of hyperparameters. So it gives us a probability and the function value, which is what is the score that we're getting given a random choice of hyperparameters. It's like this, that we are estimating the score given certain hyperparameters. The second step here is the acquisition function. What does it do? It determines the next hyperparameters to evaluate. Keeping in mind what it has learned through the surrogate model so far, it tries to explore newer hyperparameters. So there are two approaches in this acquisition function. First is exploration because you're exploring something new. And the second is exploitation. Exploitation refers to what you already know. Now there are complex algorithms behind the model as well as the acquisition function. We're not getting into that depth, but I hope you get an idea. The main difference between the Bayesian search and the earlier approaches is that there is some intelligence that you build as you continue to explore the hyperparameter space. And that makes us come up with optimal decisions in a smarter way. Unlike grid search, where every hyperparameter combination that we are experimenting with is independent of the earlier hyperparameter combinations or the subsequent combinations. There's no linkage or connection. It so happens that in this process of Bayesian search, we also utilize the dependencies between the hyperparameters. And that's another interesting aspect that given the value of a particular hyperparameter, what is the value of the other hyperparameter that gives us the optimal score? That is also somewhat better utilized in case of Bayesian search compared to the classic approaches. Next, we'll show you the hands-on piece where we will be applying two approaches. First, using scikit-learn optimize for the Bayesian search. And second would be a somewhat more advanced approach using a framework called Optuna, which goes a little beyond Bayesian search as well. It accommodates Bayesian search as one of the methods, but it has even more advanced algorithms to do automated hyperparameter tuning. Code-wise, it's going to be very straightforward and simple. The only piece that you needed to understand before we do that is why we need it in the first place. And this video intended to do just that. 